Okay, good morning. It is Thursday, 25th of February. Going to get you up to speed on what happened on the close of Wall Street, some highlights from overnight in Asia, and then just generally what we're looking out for for the day ahead. Had a really great masterclass session with Bilal Hafiz from Macro Hive yesterday. Uh, so for anyone in the community on Amplify Live, if you missed that, the recording will go up later this morning. Uh, if you would like to check that and you're not part of the community, just check out Amplify Live. Com. But look, let's start with this, which is the heat map of the S&P 500 yesterday. And yesterday we saw a firm higher close on Wall Street. Uh, the S&P 500 up 1.14%, the Dow up 1.35%, the Nasdaq again, a slight laggard, but positive 0.8%. So one of the first decent major up days that we've had, and if you're looking at things like the S&P, we basically reversed all of the week's losses. In terms of the Dow, we briefly touched 32,000, of course, as well, an all-time high. Um, energy, as you can see on the heat map, an industrial uh, companies led the gains, financials as well, particularly firms. So this is that rotational play that people are talking about. So some of the familiar softness seen in some of the large mega cap tech names like Apple and Amazon down half and 1% each respectively. But some of the more cyclical based names, industrials, financials outperforming on the narrative of this improving growth um, picture that people are buying into at the moment. Importantly, what is underpinning a lot of the movement at the moment was apprehension, if you like, about what high yields means, particularly for the stock market at the beginning of the week. Now that we've had Jay Powell's semi-annual testimony, and he's very much reiterated the Fed's accommodative monetary policy stance, we heard very similar from the Bank of England governor yesterday dismissing and the idea of the threat of what higher inflation might mean. We've had similar as well from further commitments and tweaks to ongoing bond purchases that could be done at the ECB from Christine Lagarde. So at the moment, any idea that the central banks might be nearing the point, particularly with the emphasis on the Fed, of having discussions around tapering are unwarranted at this point in time. This low rate, a very expansionary monetary policy is here to stay. Despite the general improvements that we've been seeing in underlying economic data, uh, improvements in vaccinations, which as well, consequently, we're seeing lots of improvements on the COVID-19 developments in the likes of the US and the UK, albeit, you know, one thing we do need to be aware of is that the situation in Europe a little bit more precarious on that front, particularly in the likes of France, one of the major Eurozone economies, of course. Um, but Allied to just generally this, these moves, we've also had vaccine updates. Um, so just get you up to speed. Um, we've had Pfizer by Entech COVID-19 vaccine was overwhelmingly effective against the virus in a study that followed nearly 1.2 million people uh, in Israel. Johnson & Johnson's COVID-19 vaccine, as we saw yesterday, is seen as safe and effective, according to US regulators, ahead of then more formal approval at the end of the week. And Moderna is planning to study multiple approaches to vaccine booster shots that could protect, protect against emerging coronavirus variants. So just a lot of positive news there in general. And so if we're looking at the charts this morning of what's going on, We've, we've basically held much of the moves that we, we had at the end of yesterday. So index futures in the US still um, holding on to the upward move that was seen in the cash markets really from the opening bell. And the Nasdaq's up about 44 points, the S&P up 10, the DAX then up about 74 at the get-go this morning. In the currency markets then, we're seeing a kind of reversion back to general dollar weakness theme. The Dixie's down about two tenths of 1%. That is giving a bit of underlying support to both major pairs this morning, which is more a reflection of the greenback as both euro dollar and cable each up around 30 pips respectively, as you can see here in the top left. Um, gold market, uh, not too much movement going on, a little bit of resistance found at the daily pivot, which is also the psychological and technical resistance point of 1800, uh, as you can see here, an about turn in price just as Europe came in. And we're trending back down to a fairly moderately interesting technical level of around 17.93 at the moment, down four bucks. Crude, just generally holding on to what has been a, a, a persistent move higher. Um, so all of those major factors we've been talking about all week still remain in play. There is some, perhaps you could deem bearish news coming out of an article citing sources and Reuters about the potential 
uh, influx of, of more supply coming from OPEC. But I think at the moment that is very much overshadowed generally by this whole um, kind of reflation view at the moment that's, that's happening and the more positive signs about the economic story uh, going forward. A couple of stories then uh, otherwise to, to update you on. Um, and one of the things I want to talk about briefly was this, which I just thought was quite interesting. I don't necessarily think that this is a big uh, positive to an action or trade right now, right here in, in terms of the European Open. But it's an, another variable that helps support the underlying notion that equities have still got room, headway on the upside to go. And the stimulus checks, there was an interesting survey that came out from Deutsche Bank. And they basically were, were surveying, canvassing people's opinion on the street in, in the US about with these forthcoming US stimulus checks, what are you going to do with them? And they actually saw that there was around 37% um, well, respondents would put about 37% of the stimulus check on an average basis into equities. So retail buying through, we'll see whatever form that might take, you know, a lot of these zero commission uh, trading platforms and so on. But then looking at the size of checks to the percentage, this would equate to around $170 billion of potential fresh wave of retail inflows coming into the stock market according to Deutsche Bank. One of the interesting underlying metrics there was that basically irrespective of your demographic, so age or income, everyone's looking to get a piece of this stock market at the moment on a retail level. Uh, and obviously the government dishing out $1,000 plus checks to people, there's, a, there's a, a significant proportion of that that's going to be going into the stock market, uh, irrespective of the valuations that we might be trading and uh, some of the perception about whether we're overbought or not uh, at this point in time. So yeah, quite an interesting um, assessment that was done by the bank. Um, the OPEC headline, I mean, this is it that I was talking about. So just to get you up to speed, OPEC Plus is reportedly weighing a boost to oil output uh, of 500,000 barrels per day from April, and Saudi is expected to end its voluntary 1 million barrels per day cuts from April as well, according to sources. At the moment for me, you know, a million, million and a half here or there is obviously a meaningful amount, but I would say that the market is more forward looking about the speed and trajectory of the economic recovery at hand at the moment. I would say beyond that of um, what OPEC are going to do, and realistically, this is two months away as well. So, um, I think at the moment this type of news flow is is a, is a side issue. I don't think it's particularly bearish for price if we're looking at things this morning. Um, if anything, looking at WTI crude, even if we were to get some pullbacks, which we have kind of been seeing throughout the, the week with oil, the general directional trade as we have been going from 58 handle all the way up to nearly a 64, I still think is to the upside at the moment. Any pullbacks here, 63 and then 62.78, encapsulating some of the high from uh, midweek or I should say Tuesday session, uh, could be quite interesting there to support prices as we go through the rest of the day. Um, looking at the, the calendar, what have we got? And there's a few things to comment on. The UK European morning is particularly quiet. There's not really a great deal of things going on. So it really is a US centric session. Uh, these 10 o'clock numbers coming out of the Eurozone are never market moving. I know they sound quite punchy, these sentiment readings, but uh, they're really not a focal point in terms of uh, a catalyst to create movement in European assets. The US session really is, is, is then the focus. Uh, you do have durable goods. You've got the second preliminary reading of Q4 US GDP. Uh, you've got initial jobless, core PCE prices, but the price core PCE price index is on Friday is the key one that we're looking out for on that regard. Um, jobless claims is expected to come out 838,000. Um, that is a slight improvement from the prior week, but and is relatively on the upper end of the averages of what we've been seeing in recent weeks. But overall, you know, pending home sales as well coming out at three o'clock. So a lot of US data points. And traditionally, what would be, you know, quite key ones, jobless, GDP uh, and durables. But for me, I think as far as where we're at at the moment from an intraday sentiment basis, I don't really see these data points creating too much of a meaningful move in markets. 
I think for the time being, the market is still kind of digesting and playing out this rebalancing, if you like, of getting over the fearfulness that I think dominated market sentiment at the beginning of the week has been lifted almost by by Powell and some of the other major central bankers by just coming out and reassuring the market that nothing's going to change quickly. Uh, and so, yeah, uh, equities have moved higher. Um, could we be in for a bout of consolidation now for the time being, which is basically a net neutral positioning if you're looking at S&P for on the week. And I think that's probably pretty fair for the moment. Um, uh, yields still warrant watching, of course. Yesterday was meaningful. We had a break above um, the highest levels to where we were pre-pandemic of last year, so the beginning of 2020. The US 10-year still resides down at around its lower levels this morning. Uh, so it does still constitutes watching for the time being. But right now, right here at the European Open, uh, it's pretty much where we left off, really, at the end of yesterday. And, and going forward, I don't feel like we should necessarily right now punch higher and stocks start moving again. I think perhaps then some moderate profit taking perhaps on the move yesterday that then leads to a bit of consolidation over the coming hours and then waiting for the US market to really get underway for, for, for direction is how I'd be playing today. Cool. Well, well look, that's it. Uh, so nice and short today. Um, you can check out my, my full kind of briefing, if you like, um, on my my Twitter handle below. I've, I've updated it already in the community in, in the Discord room. And yeah, worth having a read as well on an FT article um, that is out about the um, the vaccine side or the virus side of things. I did post a link with a couple of graphics on my Twitter. Uh, I do recommend taking a read of that as well. It's quite, a, quite an interesting uh, story to look at. All right, guys, going to leave it at that and wish you a good day. Thanks very much.